I started out uh, preparing a very uh, comprehensive sort of a coverage of what you might do if you were going to project manage your way through the process and deliver a house out the end. Discovered it ran to over 50 slides. So what you're going to get tonight is a very condensed version of that. Um, I apologize in advance for it being a light skim over the top. But what I'm aiming to do is to give you some source that you can go to, which will help you go in the right direction and ask the right questions going forward. So first up, we have an agenda. The agenda covers um, these options here, managing your rebuild and building contracts, progress payments. And then we've got a panel of three who are going to be able to take us forward on that. The third uh, group are, are panel members here, and we, we'll, I'll introduce them as the thing progresses. Okay, so managing your rebuild. We figure out that there's really only three good options. The options are around um, you're doing it yourself, you've got to have a certain level of skill, you've got to know what you're getting into, you've got to be able to deal with subcontractors, tradies, wage staff, and all sorts of people. It's probably not for the majority of people, but we need to be aware that some people might want to go down that track. The more likely solution is that you'll want somebody else to come in as your agent and help you get through the process. There are two really strong ways that that could be done. You could engage either a builder or an architect who would act as your project manager and help you get your way right through the process or you can go to a, what we would call a turnkey project which is where a design build company would come in and they would adjust their uh, normal arrangements of building plans to get you something which matches your requirements and then they would get the contract in place which would carry it from the day you said you wanted to build through to the end and we've got um, uh, Christine here who will talk to that and we've got Dennis here and um, Alistair, who are going to talk about the architecture and the um, building side of it. And so I'm going to race through in 15 minutes as I'm starting to do now. Okay, how do you choose? Well, I'd have to say um, you've got to ask yourself, do I have the necessary experience to take the way I want to do it? First of all, you've got to decide what role you want. Every single person who is rebuilding has a role to play. It's going to be a pleasurable experience. At the end of the day, you're going to come back to a new property and it's going to be the way you want it if you've carried out the process well. The thing that we've got to do is make sure that you understand you've got some homework to do. You need to be making some decisions. It might be right down to the color of the carpet. You need to be making some decisions along the way. You can't just uh, expect somebody else to come in and take the, over the whole project because they'll be bouncing ideas off you as you go forward. Um, you also need to think about what is the technical content of it, the issue of um, whether there's geotech, whether the structural, whether the building is, is that you're going to replace it with is in a good foundation zone, not a good foundation zone. That's going to weigh quite heavily on the decision because the change from being able to build a conventional house to needing to take in the engineering just complicates matters just that so much more. So, are you confident around the building consent process? Could you, could you carry something through a building consent process? It's a much more friendly thing than it used to be, and as long as you've got the right information, you probably can, but you need to understand what the right information is that you need to hand in, and that's where the trick comes. You've really got to have a level of knowledge to do that. Um, how do I find out what I don't know? You need to be thinking about what's your family network, who, who else do I know that can give me information, how can I gather what I need in order to be able to make the decisions I've got to make. And if you haven't got a very strong network or you don't know anybody else, you've got to find some other mentor who can help you get through the process. What fits with my budget and my obligations? Well, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? You've kind of got to be able to say before you sign that contract that you know exactly how much money you've got and you know that it will cover what you've got to do. A little bit more on that later. Um, one of the really tricky things is the hard decision process. There are going to be trade-offs to be made about what you get, how big the floor area will be, how big will the third bedroom be, what will we do about the overall colours, 
and those sort of things. And they are not necessarily things that can be done very easily. And so you're probably going to need a third party to help you mediate way, way through that. So again, thinking about your method um, against that. So have you got the time? Think about the time it will take. If you want to do it yourself, you can be an owner builder. It means you have to be the person who lived on the property and do it yourself. You can get qualification through the council to formally become the owner builder. You can do it yourself. A full year's work maybe. Some people are going that way. Not many. There's the opportunity to take a hands-on project management role. So you might uh, subcontract the work out like I was saying just before. It's going to be up to 25 hours a week if things get a bit prickly. But you might get away with 10 if you're really smart and you've got the right contractors on in the first place. Contracting the designer. This is because it's four to four or so hours, four to five hours, because um, you're going to have lots of decisions to make along the way, and the designer's going to be keen to deliver what you're thinking, not what they're thinking. So there'll be quite a bit of input. Or you might go with the turnkey process, which takes less time because the decisions are made up front, and the ability to actually work your way through those other bits is guided so that you can get to the decisions much quicker um, and is probably the most efficient one about project management funds, it's unlikely that you will be getting in your settlement something which allows you to take on an independent project manager for a residential house. Because if you think about normal residential house building, it's not very often that you would have a project manager. You would normally use the architect or the builder or um, the building company as the route to get the project management done. That doesn't mean that in your settlement you shouldn't know that there's enough money for somebody to do that work because it is work. Even a very good project manager is going to spend many hours a week on the project. So you need to be careful of that. How will I manage the money? Well, you know how much you're going to spend. That, um, you need some obligations satisfied. We've got um, uh, people here who can talk about uh, where the banking industry sits in it and the insurance process and we'll be able to um, give you some guidance on that outside of this talk itself. But what you've got to remember is the more involved you are, the more you've got to get down into the detail, the more you've got to be aware of what the costs are of what you're choosing, and the more you've got to kind of keep your fingers on the pulse. Okay, so if we move to building contracts, um, what we've got here is an opportunity for me to shrink 50 slides into one, and what we're talking about here is you'll always need a building contract. That is, uh, that's a given. All the, all the value that you're asking for is, in, is going to be above the threshold for doing it without a contract. If you're taking on a, a professional like an architect or an engineer, they will have their own short form contract which runs to one page or two pages. It's an industry standard. It's used all over the country and you would find that it's a relatively easy thing to cross-check that it's the right contract um, to go for that sort of work. The contractors also will have a standard form, and it's much better to stick with the standard forms. They're tried and true. They've got um, clauses in them that are essential, like a dispute resolution clause, which you should be checking is there, and be satisfied that it's the right thing to do if you get into an argument with anybody. Really good. And you need to pre-arrange and pre-agree your payments. Well. One thing that I would say is don't go for a monthly cycle on your payments because you'll spend half the month working out how much you should pay at the end of the month. It's very difficult to measure four metres of wiring in the house or um, you know, half a metre of plumbing or something like that. Much better to go by a staged process. So set the benchmarks where you really know they are. Slab on the ground, walls standing, linings in place, services ready to go. Those sort of step change points are much better for payments because nobody can argue. If you can't turn the lights on, the power's not going, right? Turn the power on, time to pay for the power, right? Very good um, practice and other people will agree with that. You will need to keep a contingency between 10 and 15% because um, you need to be able to hold at the end of the job enough money to get the builder to finish the job. If you don't keep a little bit of money behind, the builder is tempted to go on to his next job because he's actually pretty close to getting the cash in and he needs to start something else to keep his cash flow going. With a little bit of a retention, you can hold him to getting the job finished 
and that when I say finished, I mean code compliance and any other work that is not required for code compliance that the builder ought to be doing before he leaves the site. And then you would pay out the balance of the money. You might want to slip half that retention back at the half point, but um, you need to be really careful. Okay. Um, here's a, a booklet, which I had a copy of to wave around, which I haven't got, but it's on the table at the back. Um, it covers off these issues. Contracts and progress payments, how to choose a good contractor and sign a written contract. So there's a, there's a bit in there about um, making sure that you have a, a track record from the, the person who's doing the contract. There are legal obligations for the contractor to supply you with certain information. It's all laid out in the booklet. And you should know that it's there and you should be sure to look at it. Um, regardless of who it is who's, who's taken the contract on your behalf, you should be looking at that information yourself because you own the contract for the building process, so you need to be on top of it. You, this book also contains some rights and obligations. The law changed at the beginning of January, which gave consumers a much stronger ability to get work done after the end of the contract when maintenance is required or there's a failure of part of the, the, the building. Um, to get the person back, there are rules around you can just ask for it in the first 12 months, but after that you have to prove that it was part of the build process that caused the problem, but you've got 10 years to do that um, as well. So that's all really good stuff, and it's all laid out in that booklet. By the time we get to contract, we've already had a significant relationship with you, and that relationship will have covered, is the site, is the plan right for your house, all of those technical details, you will have gone, we will have gone through something that looks like this, about 315 lines of decisions that we will have discussed with you. This is your safety belt, it's also your parachute to safety. And in it, we will have gone through and talked about what do you want for your roof, what door handles, what colours, everything. So the contract represents quite a significant journey we've taken together in that relationship. The most important thing then going to contract is that you will have read it carefully and that you'll fully understand it. What is in that building contract, first of all the terms of reference, then the standard building agreement which sets out things like our obligations to you and your obligations to us, what will happen if there's a lot, um, bricks for example that change, substitutions, variations and the knowledge that any variation or change will be in writing. It's, we go to contract protecting both parties. We also have another several pages, which is what the government now requires us to give you. It's got examples of our insurance policies and the other information that you need to be informed and to know the processes if anything goes wrong. We also have this file, the COSTA file, which has got everything detailed in it. And behind that is a lovely colour pictorial specification of the thing. So if we've got a, a number, a code number of a product, we also have a picture of that. So you know that's what we got. Then we have the plans. Have we got it right on the site? Is that the right way? Have we got it facing the sun? Is that everything right? Because you'll be signing all these. Then we have the kitchen plans. Very important, and you will have been to a kitchen designer and customised that kitchen. We also have an application for the master build guarantee, so you're protected as soon as that contract is signed. We apply for the master build guarantee, and we also ask you to sign an authority to act on your behalf for all our weird and wonderful dealings with the lovely City Council, all the requests for further information, and all of the things that we need to know that we get it just right so your house isn't going to block your neighbour's view or anything like that. We also include any special conditions, which may be solicitors, approval, or anything else that you might need. We generally work on six progress payments. A deposit, that's the only time you pay in advance. When the foundations are completed, and then you can dance for joy on those, as we have had some people do. When the framing is up and the roof is closed in and it suddenly starts to feel very real, and at that point I warn you, it feels small. 
And then when the jib board is all installed and you have interior walls and the place suddenly seems big again, when the interior is about to be painted, we hitch you up for another progress payment. And when the work is finally done and we have code of compliance and you can step safely down from the steps and everything is perfect and it has that new house smell, we get our final payment. We also at that point generally give you a bottle of champagne. So the benefits of a building company are basically we take responsibility. We're somebody you can blame and we're somebody you can praise. You will do both. Whoever we are, whoever you choose, you will run through a gauntlet of emotions. I've been a, a repeat builder myself and it's good to have someone else to blame. It's also good to have someone else that can hold your hand and say, no, I'm not going to let you do that, or what about this? So I don't want to sound like too, too presumptuous about going for a building company, but uh, we're there, we've got a lot of experience, and we'd love to help you. As an architect, um, we take a completely different role than um, Christine's team. We basically act as an independent advisor on your behalf and lead you through a process that we're well experienced in. Um, so we, we basically look um, at to try and interpret all your requirements and then create a set of documents that we can help you take to a, a number of builders, get a competitive price and then work with a builder. And, sorry. And, um, and then um, basically we can help you through the building process as well. So we, we basically have years of experience and knowledge. Um, the Christchurch situation is in, entirely different and there's a, there's a huge pressure on, on the whole system. And um, you know, working through repairs and rebuilds, we've really come to see quite a, quite a lot of unique stresses. And the whole process is, is a very stressful process. So the first thing I often say to my clients is, you know, get your support network in place and, and really um, be ready for a, yet another stressful process, which is building a house. Um, I think we always um, ask people to, before they start, try and be clear on their, where the money is um, and, and set a budget and understand that a budget's not just the cost of the house, you've got to make allowances for, for GST, bits and pieces of, uh, like PNG and margin on a, a building contract, council fees, consultants costs, but uh, they're quite a lot of costs that just gets bolted on to the, the basic cost of a house. Um, we also um, suggest that people have um, a contingency sum, which is basically an allowance for the things that you don't know about when you start a job um, that always go wrong. Um, I've been doing houses for 30 years that no house is ever completed for the price it first starts out at. Maybe it's different with a design build company, but when you're doing a different, different process, you have to make allowances for things that crop up as you go through a process. So generally that can be somewhere between 10 and 15%. Um, don't, e don't ever underestimate the amount of time and money that the job's going to take. Things that a, an architect will bring to your job, um, basically um, experience and independence, like I've talked about before. Um, we take time to sit down and um, get a, a, a brief, which is entirely about you. It's not about a package design. Every design is different. Um, a design approach that, that will generally work for you and for all the people that work in that space or uh, live in that space in time to come. We generally think about you know, what it's going to be in the future. Um, we basically, um, through, the, through the whole process of build, we um, independently can review quality and check that all the def defects and um, um, quality of workmanship and everything is properly completed. We're totally independent and we, we can look at all sorts of things. We focus on um, really uh, building long-term buildings. Um, we've got some um, ability to project manage multiple inputs because the, the process of building is very complicated um, and um, you basically need to think about, you know, planning consents, all the, all the different parts of the design that come in together and dealing with all the different parts. Uh, we do that sort of stuff. Um, we 
also, once we're on site, we try to work really closely with the builder and to resolve issues and help create um, the thing we're trying to do. So um, we're really about creating something that is, is about understanding. Um, excuse me. Um, architects are, um, are, are trained designers too, so we have um, years and years of experience and, and a passion for design, so we actually bring something that can add value to your house. Um, and depending on the designer and, and your approach, you work really closely together and try and create something that gives you really v real value and something you're really proud of. Um, we, um, basically, the, the output at the end of the, the day, we generally find has a higher market value and um, it's, it's worth having um, the extra input. We're quite often asked, you know, how much does it cost for an architect and it's really we basically quite often say well it's the value we add that really always offsets that our cost our cost is quite small master builders is obviously uh, over a hundred year old organization and is probably the preeminent uh, building uh, industry association that's in new zealand um and christchurch here we have just under 400 members and they range from individual members of apprentices through to one man and a dog in a van through to uh, Lee's Construction, Hawkins Construction, they are members of the, uh, the master builders. Okay, And a lot of the home building companies are also members of the uh, master builders. Um, we also have a local branch here that's fully manned. We have a regional branch manager full time in our office and uh, she has a support uh, assistant. And also we have what we call regional service managers who are the, 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 the man in the truck that goes around our members and he's out there to service our members, check on quality, get involved in any dis disputes and, and, and um, complaints, etc., to try and get uh, resolutions between our members and their clients. Very quickly, um, your options, obviously it's been talked about, uh, master builders cover them all, um, home building companies, uh, builders with design and build capabilities, um, air through to the big heavy construction guys. Now the type of builders that are out there, um, everyone in New Zealand now must be a licensed building practitioner to work on residential homes. Okay, so that's the first and foremost question you need to ask, are they licensed? Okay, now license was going to be the uh, big thing in, in Endor when the government first muted it. It has, uh, unfortunately the MB guys might not like me saying this, but it's been reasonably watered down. Um, the other type of uh, builders out there are ones uh, uh, that are members of associations like Master Builders. And also there's another association called uh, Certified Builders Associations, okay? Um, but to become a master builder, you have to meet certain cr criteria. Um, it's not just given out. Um, so the criteria that we look for is experience, uh, years in trading, their financial background and checks, and also quality checks. Um, and master builders will also, you know, act as uh, support to their members. So. The advantages of working with a builder that's a, a member of a trade association is that they're all signed up to code of ethics and they're managed under those ethics. Um, we provide up-to-date training for all our members. Um, we have a complaints and disciplinary process um, which gives a, a, a layer of comfort to uh, clients that, you know, if something's not quite going right with the builder that you've engaged, um, then either C bands or master builders can come in and um, be independent and sort that and resolve that situation, whatever it may be. Also, uh, we offer guarantees uh, through the construction. You heard Christine talk about the master build guarantee. That's the number one home building guarantee in the country. Um, and that, uh, I will talk about that a little bit later on. Um, choosing a builder, how do you do that? Because there's hundreds and hundreds of builders out there, okay? Um, most important bit of advice I would give you there is, um, is be careful on who you, who you choose. Don't judge a book by its cover. Do your homework. Um, look into it. It is a long relationship, a build, and it can be anywhere between sort of six months through to two years. 
Um, and if you're going through a design and build process, it can be a minimum nine months by the time you work through plans and get to a point of handing over keys. Um, do your homework, look into their financial standing, their trade and history, have a look who's actually behind the company, who's the directors, look at their team structures, um, ask for referees, go and have a look at some of the jobs they do. Okay, that's really, really important. Um, there's, there has been a lot of companies that it come and go. Boom, bus cycles are renowned for people coming into the industry. We call them the cowboys and they disappear pretty quick too. And there's been a couple of high profile companies that have been into liquidation. Uh, I think there was one in the paper actually a couple of days ago. But, um, you know, they tend to be the ones with the flash uh, cars and uh, the good websites and the brochures and stuff like that. So you've got to look beyond that. Um, why use a master builder? I'm not going to go into that. There's uh, some brochures that we have up on the front counter. Please feel free to take them away, but we outline why we, we believe uh, you should choose a master builder. Obviously your choice, but uh, I'm a bit biased. Um, also, um, choose the right option that suits your build. Okay, so it's really important. If you're building a castle, um, or something really bespoke, then you really want to go down the architect's route. If you're building something that's very, very simple, 100 square metre square box, then, you know, building companies is a great option. Right there. If there's something in between, then the individual builder teamed up with the designer, whether they, it comes the other way around, designer first builder, or builder with design you know, capabilities, you know, they're, they're good for anything sort of non-stop standard, through to the high end top architectural. And so it's really important to make sure you choose the right route to go down. Uh, so, you know, different horses, different courses. Uh, building contracts, again, it's been pretty much touched on, but what I would say is the more work you do up front, the more certainty you have on price. Okay, so if all the decisions are made prior to signing the contract, there should be very little um, change to that price unless of course there's unknowns which is typically um, ground conditions um, or instructions from the homeowner or the client. Um, most building contracts you want to sign are lump sum contracts, that means it's a, a, an agreed figure. You know, you want to steer clear of the charge up rates, of course, unless you know the person or, or, or understand the industry well, stay clear of charge up contracts. But again, just repeating that, um, cost certainty comes with having all the decisions. If you get, sign a contract and there's quite a few uh, areas where uh, decisions have not been made, then obviously that's subject to variations and that's where costs can start blowing out. Okay. Um, again, using a, use a standard contract. There's plenty of industry standard ones. Master builders have, have their own and it's used every day throughout the country and has been for the last um, 10 years. So. Um, there's other standard conditions. The New Zealand Institute of Architects have standard conditions. There's also New Zealand standards. Um, when builders use their own contracts, they're obviously doing it because they uh, uh, potentially put in things that might be in slightly in their, their favour. So sticking to standard contracts is always the first port of call. And, they, and of course, if you've got any queries of what's in your contract, obviously seek advice. Um, but if you're using a standard one that's used every day, you're generally pretty safe to go with it. Um, the Building Act has also um, been changed re recently and it's put, the, put a few more things that builders have to do before signing contracts in the favour of the, uh, the homeowner. So it's been a great move. And also extending the defect period from three months through to one year is also fantastic. Uh, I'll just quickly finish off, what's the guarantee? Um, you, you, the master build guarantee, there's three or four different options you have with the guarantee. Okay, so if you are asked to sign a guarantee, make sure you understand what's being covered and more importantly, what's not being covered. Um, you know, uh, there is a cost with the guarantee and it's normally built into the price. Um, and of course, the, the bigger the policy, or you know, the more coverage you get, the obviously the more expensive it might be. But guarantees can be as simple as covering defects for up for 10 years. So if your builder doesn't come out to fix any defects, then the guarantee company will come in, step in and fix them for you. Through to um, it's, uh, standard guarantees to cover loss of deposit if you're paying deposits, and also non-completion if the builder goes um, into liquidation halfway through your build, God forbid. 
but it does happen. Um, uh, guarantees can cover, uh, uh, the guarantee company can come in and cover the completion of the job. Okay, um, and that's about me, really. I look forward to uh, your questions, and um, good luck with your build. Uh, if you're looking for a builder, go to the Master Builders uh, website, masterbuilders.org.nz. Thank you.